So good. Man, when that becomes a reality, church, that God left heaven and put on flesh for his creation, it just, it, man, it moves your spirit, right? It moves your soul to know, man, I am free. I am forgiven. I am born again. I have Christ in my life. His spirit reigns and dwells within me to understand that God left heaven, put on flesh so that you and I will be in relationship with him. It's, it's stunning. And we can never lose sight of this. We can never lose sight of this as a follower of Christ. We can never lose sight of what it was that God, who is forever, put on flesh so that we may have avenue to eternal life through Christ, his son. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Come on, welcome to Believer's Chapel, man. Pumped that you are with us this morning. Come on, happy Father's Day. A true shout out to the dads. Today's our day, and uh, we are celebrating with dads and donuts. Man, I am glad that we get donuts when it's mom's day, right? We do the carnation, and moms get a pretty flower, and moms are celebrated photo booth. It's amazing, and it's pretty, and it's beautiful, but really the flower is, the flower is just kind of about you, really. I mean, it's just like moms get a flower, and they get to take it out, and it's their flower. They put it in their pot, but like we don't really benefit from the flower, but when it's dad's day, it's donuts for everybody. Like, it's just really like, a, we just are here to bless. We're just here to honor everybody as dads. We don't just take our day just for ourselves. We love to share and be generous. So here at Believer's Chapel, everybody benefits on Father's Day because it's dads and donuts. We got plenty of donuts filled, unfilled, frosted sprinkles. If you like it, it's yours, man. Take a couple of them, take a few of them. Probably had some on the way in. Probably gonna take a few on the way out. It's dad's day. Ditch the diet just for a day and enjoy. But everybody gets to celebrate with a donut. That's just kind of how us dads roll, man. That's how the fathers of BC go. We want to share the blessing that we get with everybody. Come on. Hey, uh, I'm excited that today is Dad's Day, man. It is Father's Day. It's a really big deal. But we celebrate Father's Day here at BC. And today is just kind of be one of those days that we're going to get a little aggressive. We're going to get right at it because it is a season that we need to fight as, as the lead of our home. And we got to fight as fathers for the priority that which God has set up for family. Right, which God set up for dads. When God set up for, for the institute and the priority of family, the enemy is trying to tear apart. More than ever that I have seen, the enemy is trying to crush the idea of family, the idea of, of uh, husband and wife. That's kind of the first. That's kind of how it starts, right? Husband and wife. And then you have mother, father, which is son and daughter with his brother and sister, and then son and daughter go out and they find a spouse, which is a son-in-law and a daughter-in-law. And then in that, they begin to have children. So now the, the, the first parents become grandparents. And there's this amazing picture that we're going to uncover today of how God has created family and that bubble within family to be a priority. Satan hates family. Satan hates marriage. Satan hates male and female. Satan hates children. And men, it's on us. Get it, get it quick. It's on us to lead our family in such a way that we leave a legacy to our children's children, that we leave a legacy to our children's children's children, that we lead in such a way that we understand the God-given call and the God-given role as a father, as a husband, as a dad, as a granddad, that you understand your role, that it is the family first that God has set up as a priority. And you better not, watch this, please hear me, you better be very careful and you better not let anyone or anything cause interference to that which is most important, which is the family. Never lose sight of how busy you are. Never lose sight of money. Don't lose sight of all these other interruptions. Don't lose sight of the priority. We're going to get it today of the bubble of family. What God has set up as a priority of family, the enemy wants to bring in even that which is good to interfere what God created as a family. We're going to hit this today because today is a day that family is just trying to be railroaded and sidelined to an agenda of Satan that is trying to destroy family. And my call in charge is this, is where's the men? Like, where are the dads? Where are the fathers? That you would know your place and you'd own your space. And that you would never allow someone or something to come into that circle that is most important. Husband, wife, mother, father, son and daughter, brother, sister, 
and then they get married. So you have your, now your son-in-law and your daughter-in-law, and then now you have grandchildren. That's that picture. Anyone or anything that causes interference with anyone in your circle, which is family, we're on guard. And men need to be on guard. If there's anything or anyone trying to interfere with that circle, we're going to look at it. The Bible talks about husband and wife. The Bible talks about mom and dad. The Bible talks about brother, sister. The Bible talks about son and daughter. The Bible talks about, about son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws. The Bible talks about grandchildren. That's God's picture. And we see it today. The enemy is just coming against it. The enemy is just coming against it. The enemy is just trying to destroy the family unit. And today we fight back and we say, no, not, not, not on my watch. Nope, not on this day. Nope, no, I know my role as a dad. I know my role as a husband. I know what I'm called to do and I know who I am called to be as the head of this house. And no one and no one is going to get interference when it comes to the priority of that bubble and those who are in that bubble called family. Church, be aware. Men, we're going to hit it today. We're going to go to several different places. There's not just two scriptures and done. We're ripping through scripture to set a, a, a true biblical foundation of God's priority. Not man's, not Satan's, not the world agenda, not the agenda that's, that's, that's floating around this month for pride. Like that's baloney. This is God's agenda for family, man, woman, husband, wife, right? Son, daughter, mother, father, brother, sister. Like this is a reality to scripture and men, today's a day. Know your place and own your space. And if anybody or anything is trying to get in that circle, that's causing interference, where honor becomes misplaced. Honor is called to go to the parents, and if it gets misplaced, again, the enemy is just trying to interfere with family. And the head of the house, who is the father, is supposed to stand against it. So what we want to do today is always want to start with praying over the dads and the granddads and the great-granddads. Because I want you to hear this today. Because you need to go in, like, protect mode. You need to go into lead mode. You need to go in honor mode. And you need to look at what God has called you to. God's called to you. And I'd say, I need, I, need, I need this, man. I need to put my head up. I need to put my shoulders back. I need to put my chest out. And I will be the man that God has called me to be. I will be that man who leads fearlessly. I will be that man who understands what it is to walk in a sincerity, to honor God and to fear him and to lead with love and to lead first with who I am in Christ and who I am is what his call is for me as a man. Like today's the day. Where you're just like, okay, Sean, you seem a little aggressive. <laughs> well, good, you're catching on. I've been looking forward to this message for a very long time, so buckle up. I've been pumped about this message. I'm excited to talk to the dudes. Like, again, it's been said, you've heard me say it, someone else coined this, I didn't make this up, but men are like a thermos. You can drop them, you pick them up, and you drink out of them. Women are like a wine glass. You drop them, they're fragile. So dudes, uh, we're going to take some hits, and we're going to lump up, but it's going to be one of those things you're like, no, wait, I am a dad. I am a father. I am called to protect. I am called to provide. I am called to charge. I am called to lead. This is what God's called me to. This is the call of my life. I will protect that which is most important to me. I'm not going to allow anyone or anything to get into this bubble. I'm not going to let the enemy. I'm not going to let the school. I'm not going to let outside influence. I'm not going to let the, no, I'm, I'm called to protect. This is where we're headed today. Come on, gentlemen, if you are a father, or if you're a granddad or a great-granddad, please stand to your feet, because I want to pray over you that you would get this. Come on, stand to your feet, please. We want to pray over you this morning. Come on. Happy Father's Day. Pumped that you are with us. If you are a grandfather in this place, man, you are leaving a legacy behind you. If you're a great-grandfather in this place, your legacy is not over. Like, the fight is not over. Like, listen, I have three amazing kids. Renee and I have these three amazing kids. Two of them are married to two amazing people who love Jesus. Nathan and Katie love Jesus. Amazing leads for our, our family. It's incredible. But me as a grandfather, this is now where I fight. The fight begins. The fight is continuous for, for my grandchildren. My kids are in great shape spiritually. The fight is for a clear path for the grandchildren. Right? We don't give up that fight because, uh, you know, the kids are out of the house. We maintain a fight and a battle for that which is right and that which is just before God because we're grandparents and we start to fight for our grandkids. You understand that as a granddad. You understand that. But come on, I want to pray for you that you would hear this today, that you would truly respond to this today, that you would be one to say, no, I get it. I know my role. I know my place and I will own my space. I know my place. 
God-given place. You don't assign that place. God's given you an assignment as a man who is a dad. He's given you an assignment. Know your assignment. Know your place. Own your space. Gentlemen, this is a day and an age where we need to really be men and we need to be strong. And we need to not get caught up in, in, the, in the wave of today. That Listen, please hear me. Uh, as I speak to you as you stand, I speak to you as men, you're going to have to swim upstream. You're going to have to be that one that maybe you fight alone for your family. You might be that one that you stand firm on God's word when no one else will. Maybe you be the one to realize this is an uphill battle that I am ready to climb and I'm ready to fight. That you realize in the sway of, of this generation that we have, in the sway of the season of life that we are in, it is not swaying towards men. It's not swaying towards men being the head and men being the lead. It's swaying the other direction. Like So you're going to have to truly fight upstream here. And if you're up for that battle, you're in the charge. And today's one of those days I'm juiced about this, man. I've been waiting for this, to speak on honor and to speak about that man who is worthy to be honored. Be that guy. Be that dad that your children look up to you and honor you. Be that dad that you make sure that honor never gets misplaced, that the, uh, the honor of your children don't go somewhere else. Be that man who protects. Be that guy who provides. Today we hit it, and I'm juiced about this. So come on, if you would, please. If you're a, a dad, a granddad, your father, man, I'm asking that you would just raise your hands to the Lord. I want to pray over you that you would hear this. And when we're done with this today, you are ready to charge, man. You're ready to go. Come on, let's raise our hands. Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name as men of this house, God, men of our own house, fathers to the children that you have blessed us. Children are a gift. Children are an inheritance, God. And Father, I pray over these men that we would be that man that you've called us to be. We will be the lead and the head of our house that you've called us to be. We will be that man that sees danger and warns from danger, protects from danger. We will be that man that understands what it is to provide for our family. We will be that man that understands what it is to leave a legacy to our children, to leave a legacy to our great, 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 great grandchildren that just keeps going because of the work that we put in, because we know our place and we will understand that, God that place that you've called us to. Father, I thank you for these men. God, I pray that today is a charge for these men. God, I pray today you speak into our lives today from your word and let your spirit move in us in such a powerful way. God, reveal truth to our hearts. God, that we may understand the very fight that we are fighting for, to be able to lead our families, to be not afraid, to be able to walk in a great fear of you and to serve you with a diligence, God as we lead our homes. Father, I thank you for the legacy that we will leave. I thank you, God, for the love that we lead with. God, I thank you that we can be tough and we can be tender at the same time and lead our families. Father, we are prepared for battle. We are prepared for war, for manhood. We are prepared for what it is to be the father that will lead and protect and never allow anything within that bubble that will cause distress to the family. And let us open our eyes and see what we need to see today. Open our ears to hear what we need to hear today. And open our heart that we would respond to it. In Jesus' name. Come on, man. Amen. You may have a seat. Let's go. Come on. Joshua 24. This is the, the open is the close this morning. Right? The open is the close because this is where we want to be. You've heard us preach on this. We sp spoke on this many times. Man, you look... You look at Joshua 24. This is the story. Joshua is now leading Israel, and he's, and he's come to this kind of crux. He's come to this place where Israel... Gods of your forefathers, they blew it. They were in slavery. They served idols. They served God. They blew it. You can serve them. Or you can serve the gods of the Amorites, these false idols and these false gods because you're living in their land. You can do that. But Joshua says, but as for me and my house, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Church, what is it? to be that father, to be that dad, to know your role, to say, listen, if everyone else, I will swim upstream if I have to. If I am the only one, I will do it. 
You go do whatever you're going. If you want to follow the pattern of Satan in this world, if you want to, if you want to go with the flow of this generation, if you want to take man out of man in this generation, if you want to buy into the lies of the enemy of this generation, then you can fit in with most. Or you can say, no, I'm willing to go against the grain. No, I'm willing to swim upstream. No, I'm willing to be the only one. Because that's what God's called me to be. Let's look at this in Joshua 24. It says this, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth and put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. This is Joshua. He says, you can do that, but put them away. Be sincere. Be authentic. Fear the Lord. His suggestion is put them away and serve the Lord. He goes into the second thing. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which are beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, which land you're living in. But as for me, I love when he puts himself first. Why? Because the, the man goes, but as for me, the head of the house, but as for me and my house. Isn't it amazing that the house follows me? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I love this. But as for me, what goes first? Joshua, the head of the house, says, but as for me, and then the house follows, and my house, we will so serve the Lord. So man, when you, when you see today in the day and age that we are in, that we have a generation that's trying to just destroy manhood and, to, and take, truly take the man out of man, and we miss, please hear it, we miss this, this bubble of priority that God Almighty has created from the garden, from the very beginning. Adam, Eve. Adam, lead. When something goes wrong, such as sin in the garden, because of Eve, Adam, that's on you. Why? Because Adam, you're the lead. Because Adam, you're in charge. Because Adam, you're, you're the head. And when there's mess up and screw up, Adam own it. It's on you. Like, again, when you see, not world picture, but man, what is the foundation that the creator of the heaven and the earth set up for the picture of family? If you want God's results, you have to do it God's way. You can't do the world way and expect God's results. Please hear this. Men, you can't do it the world way and expect godly results. You do it God's way, you get God results. God has called the men to lead. God has called men to be men. God has called men to take the hit. God has called men to take the responsibility of their family. That's what God has called for men to do. So you can make a choice to follow the ways of this world. You can make a choice to follow the false gods of, of demasculating men. You can follow the gods of this world, which are just idols of all kind of, uh, all kind of genders and all that whole train wreck of a craziness that, that, that they're in. You can follow all that and think that that's all okay, but you're not going to have God's blessing because you're doing it the world's way and you're not doing it God's way. And I want you to hear this because th this is me just kind of getting in our face a little bit to say, listen, if you're seeing what's happening in today's day, man, this is that like, okay, this is good. Like, no, I need this. Like, I'm ready to charge. No, I'm ready to go. No, I will protect my family. Like, when you understand what it is, watch this. Keep these five. This is huge. I want to be faithful to Jesus. I want to be faithful to my wife. I want to be faithful to my children. I want to be faithful to my work. And I want to be faithful to my church. If you are that guy, who says, I am faithful to Jesus first. He is my priority. And then I am faithful to my wife. And then I'm faithful to my children. And then I'm faithful to my work. And then I'm faithful to my church. If you are that and you keep that and those five top priorities as the head of your house and say, this is our list and this is who we will be and this is where I'm taking my family, that it is Jesus first. It is my spouse, my wife second. That is one of the greatest things you can do for your children is how you love your wife how you honor your wife, 
and how you praise your wife. And then you put your kids in that slot of third. I will be faithful to my kids. Men, lead your families. Love your children. Time, time, time. Spend time with your kids. If you are spending time with everybody else and you're not spending time with family, you are out of balance. Know your place and own your space. God's program, family, in that circle, that's the priority. That's the priority. And what happens when you say, I'm going to keep these five. Jesus, my wife, my children, my finances, and my church. You will have God's hand a blessing on your life. You will lead with a strength You will lead being proud of your family. You will lead with with a charge within your spirit to say, I know my role. I know my role. And if I have to swim alone, I'll swim alone. But I know my role. Come on, we're going to flip around here. Ephesians chapter 6, please. New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Again, we are going to just kind of crush the bubble of, of this society and where we're at today where family is so hard under attack and, my, and this whole message is like, where's the men? Like, where are the dads? Where are the fathers? Where does the God lead to the home? Where does the God lead to the children? Where, where have you allowed influence into that bubble? Husband, wife, mother, father, son and daughter, brother, sister, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, grandchildren, all of that biblical picture of family. Let me say this, there's, a, there's a, my dad obviously praising my father on Father's Day. I've had an amazing dad from birth. He came to know Jesus before any of his children ever came to breathe. He's known Jesus, he's loved Jesus, he's followed hard after Jesus, and he has taught us in the way that we should go to follow Christ. I have a picture of this amazing dad. He is 85, I am 53. He still, I love to hear his voice. I call him and say, Dad, I'm just saying hello. I just want to hear your voice. You know where I got that from? Because he would call me and say, Sean, I love you. I just want to hear your voice. It could be a 10-second conversation. And I love it. I love it. I love it. So honoring your parents, it never like ends with age. Like, okay, we're out of the house. I don't have to show honor. No, I love to honor my dad and mom. I love to honor my father. Like he has left a legacy from ministry, from his coaching days in college to ministry days in the bookstore. You know what I love? I still hear from people just walking the streets. Hey, your mom and dad. Like when I hear that, I know a story's coming. Never heard a bad story yet. Hey, your mom and dad in that bookstore, you, you, you probably know, but maybe you don't, the impact and the influence that they made. I would go in that bookstore and he would give me a free cassette. Some of you are like, what's a cassette? Like, <laughs> a, 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 a casket? Like, what do you mean? Cas- a, 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 what do you mean? Like, he gave me what? Like, he, I walk in the bookstore and he gave us a cassette or he gave us this or I'm a singer and he gave me my music for free so I could sing. Like, story after story after story and that's my dad. And then I have two other dads to thank. I have Mr. Gordon Scott, who raised an amazing daughter. And, and when you know this, dads, when you know it's bigger than you, when you know that you're raising somebody that one day will marry somebody, and then they now are in that circle, they're in the priority. That Gordon Scott raised an amazing young lady named Katie who married my son Carter, who's given us our first grandson, Ezra. Like, I'm thankful for a godly dad who raised up a godly woman for my godly son. I'm thankful for Chris Clock. I'm thankful for Chris Clock, and he raised up a godly son named Nathan that now is married to my godly daughter named Olivia, who is with child and going to give us our second. And we're juiced about that. But when men, when you get that, like that is family and nothing can interfere with that. When there are those who are trying to get in the way of that, there are those who are trying to take the place in that, there are those who are trying to interfere with that. That's enemy's plan to cause interference within a family. And I'm so thankful for Gordon and Chris who raised up godly kids in the fear of the Lord because they married my godly kids who are going to raise godly children and church. That's legacy. That's legacy. How important it is for us as dads to realize it's bigger than just our children because they're going to marry someone one day. And have we raised up the right godly woman to be that wife? Have we raised up 
the right godly son to be that husband to raise up godly children. So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, Ephesians 6, verse 1, it says this again, God's picture of family. God's picture of family. The enemy is constantly trying to get in to that circle of family. The enemy is trying always to use, whether it's TV, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's people, whether it's even that which is good, to get in the way of God created great. You've got to be on guard. You've got to be on guard. Men, this is a charge for us today to understand God's call for us to lead and protect. Watch this, Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. This comes from the top 10, man. This comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Like it's one of the top 10. It's a big deal. It's number five. Honor your, honor your parents. Like there's something real about what it is for a child to honor his mom and dad, for a child to honor his parents, and how easy that honor can be misplaced when there's interference, when you let people in, and your children start giving the right honor to you to someone else, that's honor misplaced. You got to be that dad that knows what it is to earn that honor. And you got to be that dad that knows what it is for your children to be that man that's worthy of their honor. Right? Like be that man who knows what it is to lead. Be that dad that is able to say no. Like I spoke to the teenagers in the first service, like, you know, just because a parent says no, and I know most teenagers, they actually think they know more than the parents. <laughs> They're wrong. They don't know more than the parents. And every mom and dad says, yeah, amen. Like they don't know more than us. And when a dad says no, it's on purpose because he's walking in his protective way. Say the answer is no. Why? Because I'm protecting you. Yeah, but why? Because I said no. Yeah, but why? Don't have to give you an answer. It's just no. Yeah, but I need an answer. Not going to give you one. Why? Because I said no. I don't need to give you an answer. Why? Because it like, you know, have you ever gone through that? Like no means protection, right? So when you see this, be the, be the dad that one day they look back and say, I, I get it now, dad. I get why you said no. I get, watch this. I get that you saw what I didn't see. Be the dad that sees what they don't see. Be the dad that can see ahead. Be the dad that sees that influence is trying to get in there. Be the dad who sees what they don't see because that's our responsibility. We're the ones on the wall. We're gatekeepers. We're the ones who are strong. We're the ones who provide. We're the ones who see what they don't see so that we can protect them from future mistakes. Like you've got to be on your A game. Gentlemen, you've got to be on your A game. That you are prepared to see what they don't see as children. You're prepared to say no because you know the result if you say yes. What happens if you are that man that your kids look back one day and say, Dad, I get it. Dad, I get it. This is why you did what you did. For all the young people, like if you really understand the work of your dad, a godly father that has done it the godly way, who has saw before you see, who has protected you from things that you never saw coming, but they did. Like, please hear me. Young people, when you have a father like that, he is rare. He's rare today. And instead of being disgruntled, instead of showing disrespect, you should truly understand what it is to be thankful as a child, to be thankful for one who understands, dad did this, dad has my best in mind, dad is my protector, dad is my provider. I know that dad is praying when I never see him praying. I know that dad is covering me when I never see him covering me. I know that dad sees me in a direction. He's doing everything I can to pull me in the right direction. Like instead of fighting that, be thankful for that. Like be thankful for a father because he's rare. That's doing it God's way. Come on, look at this again, Ephesians 6. Verse 4 says this, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. 
Fathers, do not provoke your children in anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Flip over to Colossians chapter 3, please. Again, you see it through these letters to the churches. Family's a big deal. Like when you get that, like these are letters to the churches and the priority is family. God put family as a priority. God put family as a priority. And when you begin to see this and understand this, you begin to dive into this and say, it is family first. Anything outside of that is not priority. Don't miss that up. Husband, wife, mother, father, son, daughter, brother, sister, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, grandchildren. And then who they marry one day to give you great-grandchildren. That's the priority. Anything and anyone in today's day that the enemy is trying to destroy family that is not in that circle is not the priority. Anyone who tries to gain influence in that circle, not the priority. Man, we got to be on guard today. Men, we got to be on guard today to protect your family. Again, family is a priority. He says it again in Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Wives, be subject to your husband as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be embittered against them. Don't be sour. Don't be harsh. Don't be angry. Like, again, one of the greatest examples that you can be to your children is how to love your wife, how to honor your wife and how to praise your wife and them see that affection towards your wife. Them see you speaking highly of your wife. They see you loving your wife. They see it when they're not watching. When they, when you know, when, when even if the parents don't know that the kids are watching and the kids don't know that the parents see it, that the kids see it. Like it's not for show. No, my dad really loves my mom. And my dad honors my mom. My dad is faithful to Jesus. And my dad is faithful to my mom. And my dad is faithful to me. My dad is faithful to provide. My dad is faithful at church. Husbands, love your wives. Do not be embittered. Don't be harsh. Don't reject. Don't irritate. Watch this. Children, be obedient to your parents and all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Again, a word to the fathers, verse 21. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Do not provoke them to anger. Stop, stop poking the anger button. Stop provoking them to anger. So that they will not lose heart. Hey, dads, there's a time for tough and there's a time for tender. There's a time for tough and there's a time for tender. When you're dealing with your family, your wife and your kids, it's tender. Like don't, don't stir it up. Don't stir them up to anger. Don't just do in order to get under their skin. That's what this is talking about. Don't just stir them up to anger. Don't just irritate them. There's a time to say no. There's a time to be tender. But when someone or something is coming against your family, it's a time to be tough. There's a time to be aggressive. There's a time to know your place and own your space as that which is the protector of my family. And this here is starting to infiltrate my bubble and I'm going to be aggressive against it. There's a time to be tough. There's a time to be tender. There's a time at the same time to protect your family with an aggression at the same time being tender towards your family. Come on, I want, I want you to understand this. Flip with me, please, to 1 Samuel, please. Back to the Old Testament. Like I said, we're going to get spiritual exercise today in Scripture. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. We're going to get in the Scripture, man. Come on. We're going to rip through this 1 Samuel 30. This is this amazing picture. I love this story in the Bible. I love this picture of God. I love this picture of David. I love this picture of David's army. 
And, and when, you, when you hear the instruction of God, it should, men, it should do something. It should get you right here. God, you cannot buy into today's day of the sissy man, of the wimpy man, of the man who, who, who lets everyone else lead, the man who, who has, who has uh, truly succumbed to the, 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 the worthlessness of what the world wants for man today. And you see this picture in 1 Samuel 30? For me, it's a great picture. Here you've got David and his army. They're all fighting in a battle. When they come back to their, to their camping ground, when they come back to their place, thugs have come in and just rampaged all of their belongings, have taken everything of value, including their wives and their children. So here you've got the army. They're furious. They're so upset with David that you took us away and we're coming back from battle. And then, and then all of a sudden, thugs have come into our campground, everything that is of value. And our, our children and our wives have been taken and they actually wanted to stone David. But look at David. I want you to see it in verse eight. It says this. And David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue them? Shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And I love this. The Lord said to him, Pursue, you will surely overtake, and you will surely recover all. David, go get them back. David, pursue them, overtake them, and recover it all back. So David gets his army together. You read the story. He goes, he pursues, he finds out where they're at. He overtakes them by a slaughter, gets his women and children back, gets all of his goods back. And this was God's instruction. Men, listen, when something or someone of this day is trying to interfere with your family, who's trying to steal your family, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's TV, whether it's a person, whether it's the school system, whether it's the laws, whether it's the regulation that are against God's word, it's time to pursue, overtake. I'm not saying in a murderous way. I'm saying get your kids back. I'm saying it's time to fight. I'm saying it's time to be aggressive. There's a time to be tough and there's a time to be tender. What is it in this day that is coming against your children? Like I said in the beginning, I'm not fighting for my children so much anymore. Carter is a strong man. Woman is a, or Olivia is a strong woman who is covered by Nathan. Uh, Ethan is a strong young man. I am now fighting for my grandchildren. I am now fighting a school system for my grandchildren that they would walk in a way that is right according to God's word. This is what we fight for. And what happens when you see that aggression come out, when you see these pieces that are trying to infiltrate, that's what God had called the family to be the family unit. Gentlemen, what time is it that it will be time for you to say, no, this is my role. Man, this is my place to lead my family against the things of Satan and the things of this world and the flesh of this world and to lead them in a way to have a sincerity and be authentic to love Jesus, to have a reverence before the Lord. Come on, throw me please to Proverbs chapter 17. We've just got a couple minutes. We'll go to Proverbs 13 first. Proverbs 13. We've got a couple minutes here. I want you to see this because It begins to deal with, with, with the grandparents. It begins to deal with kind of your role as a grandparent as, again, there's that bubble. When you begin to unpack this, you begin to see this. You begin to see, okay, God, there's layers to my biblical family. It starts husband and wife. Husband and wife have children, they become mom and dads, which then give sons and daughters. Sons and daughters become brother and sister. Brother and sister get go out and find spouses, they become son-in-law, daughter-in-law. And then they give you grandchildren. And then that process starts from a grandparent point of view. 
Now watch this. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. The Bible has a lot to say about being a grandparent. So I love this because when you understand your role even as a grandparent, it's not, it's not like it ends. Like my role of legacy leaving and my role of leaving that which is behind me and leaving a legacy that is one who fears God and loves Jesus, that doesn't end when the kids leave the house. When grandkids come, like I've heard it said, I'm not saying this, I've heard it said that children are great, grandchildren are better. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I don't know. I think my kids are pretty darn great. But when I get into the Ezra mode or this another amazing gift that's coming, maybe I'll think, ah, some of that's true. Like the grandkids are better than kids. I'm not saying they are. I don't know yet. I'll give it. That report will come in time. But uh, some have said, like there's kids that are great, but man, when you have grandbabies, oh, Boop, they're just that much better. So when it comes to leaving that legacy as a grandfather, like the job's not done yet until either Jesus returns or we go home. Watch what it says. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children to his children's children that's your grandkids don't spend wastefully your grandkids inheritance don't spend wastefully your grandkids inheritance come on Proverbs 17 please Proverbs 17 verse 6 I love this grandchildren are the crown of old men like there is, again, this is God's, it's not like all emotion. This is God's design plan for family that grandchildren are the crown of old men. That means they are the celebration. Crown means celebration. And many of you know that who are granddads and grandparents. As a grandfather, you know. May my grandchild, that is my celebration. Watch this. And the glory of sons is their father. Grandchildren are the crown, is the celebration of old men, and the glory of sons. The, 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 my son and the glory, the majesty of my son is their fathers. Gentlemen, are we doing our part to be that dad to be that husband, to be that grandchild or grand, grandfather that is worthy of honor. Worthy of honor. First Timothy 5 8 says, For the man who does not provide for his household is worse than the unbeliever. The man who does not provide for his own household, that's the father's, is worse than the unbeliever. That's crazy. Men are called to provide. Men are called to provide. Men are called to protect. Men are called to lead. Men will be held accountable before the Lord one day. Men are held responsible in how they led their family. Men are held responsible to how they love their wife. Men are held responsible to how they provided. All accountable. Ephesians 5, 23 says, Husband, you are the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. And we close with this. Husbands, you are the head of the wife as Christ is head of the church. You know what head means? It means you're the accountable spiritual leader of your home. Do you want your kids and your grandkids to be able to say, God protected us? Do you want your kids to be in a place to say, no, I show great honor and respect to my dad. As for me and my house, we served. There's a point where your work here, and I'm not saying all your work because we have grandkids, 
but there's a point when your immediate kids are grown up. As for me and my house, we served the Lord, but it's as for me and my house, we served the Lord. And when Jesus returns or you go home to be with him for an eternity, you want to be able to say, as for me and my house, we served the Lord. I did what God called me to do. I knew my place and I owned my space and I protected from anyone or anything that tried to interfere with what God designed as my priority. And that's my family. Faithful to Jesus. Faithful to your wife. Faithful to your children. Faithful to your work. And faithful to your church. You keep those five things. As a father, protecting them against the craziness of this world today. Calling out sin. Calling out the crazy. And being the one who's spiritually responsible for your family. God will bless that house. You want God's results? You do it God's way. You want God's results? You do it God's way. Come on, stand to our feet, please. Come on, if everybody needs prayer for any reason, we'd love to pray with you. But I want you to take this word to heart today. Say, gentlemen, it's our time to be strong. It's our time to lead. It's our time to protect. It's our time to provide. If you have to swim upstream all by yourself, if you realize, man, I'm going to be standing alone in this charge, then stand alone and stand firm. Stand firm. Stay faithful. God will bless. Do your job. Lead your family. Wives, Children, allow your husband to lead. Well, Sean, he's, uh, he's not there yet. Well, if you don't let him lead, he'll never be there. If you undercut him and take the legs out from under him, he won't ever want to lead. Let him lead. Let him make his mistakes, but let him lead. Let his no be no and let his yes be yes. When he says something, let's go through. Let him lead. You want that man that leads spiritually, then let him lead. Let him lead. If he's not praying, when he's sleeping, pray over him. Pray over him. Pray over him. Fathers, pray for your family. Pray for your kids. Pray for your children. Pray and pray again. Be that guy. and Be that husband. And be that father that God has called you to and charged you to be. Come on, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this hour. God, you've called us to greatness in this hour. You've called us to be men that will be strong, men who will lead, men who will be fearless, men who will be faithful, men who will be fearless, men who will be faithful, men who will be fearless, and men who will be faithful. You've called us to, God. I put a charge in every one of us as a dad as a granddad, that God, we protect and that we will be able to see ahead, give us 20-20 vision, to be able to see ahead of any attack that would come against our family, any attack that anyone would try to come in and get into our family. God, that we would be that dad, we would be that father that sees ahead, that lives in protection. Hallelujah. Lord, bless us as we go. In Jesus' name.